If you need help with keeping your erections going longer and stronger, Blue Chew is here for you. Blue Chew is a discreet online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code HOLLY at checkout. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code HOLLY to receive your first month for free. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before we start, I want to give a quick shout out to my sponsors, Adam and Eve. If you go to adameve.com and use code Holly, you get 10 free gifts plus free shipping with your purchase. Adam Eve is the biggest online adult store. They have lingerie, they have toys, they have movies, they have everything sexy. So go to adameve.com and use code Holly for your 10 free gifts plus free shipping. All right. My guest today has an incredibly interesting background. She served in the U.S. military for five years, where she climbed the ranks to become an army sergeant. Now she is a rising star in porn, including getting an ABN nomination for Best New Starlet. Let's welcome Kaylee Gunner. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And it's such a pleasure to have you. I'm so excited that we could finally, like, get to sit down. You were definitely a rising star. I see you all over the place. Oh, thank you. I'm having fun. (laughs) You know, one thing I did see is that, um, and I, this is quite the recommendation I saw you work with Nikki Benz and she was talking about like, you're going to be the next big thing. And I was like, wow, because Nikki doesn't give out compliments, you know, like easily. Oh, that means so much. Oh, she's like my idol. Like if I could have an idol in the porn industry, it's her. Really? (laughs) I had to reach out to her. Okay. So what is it about Nikki that like, you find so inspiring I don't she's just a hustler Mm -hmm. she is very business minded a lot of people probably don't see that they just see her through porn but Mm -hmm. I just like the way she thinks as a person Mm -hmm. so I I love to reach out to people who are like the OG goaded kind of girls Mm -hmm. because I want to learn from them you know but yeah she's a special person yeah (laughs) Yeah. no she's 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 hot Yeah, yeah she is and she looks great yeah yeah she's been in the industry for a while but she looks exactly the same Oh, for sure. I know. I'm like, you froze. (laughs) What are you eating? (laughs) Tell me. She's a lot of fun. We hosted um, a DP star for Digital Playground for a season. Oh, cool. And um, that was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. She's a star. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) I have to say, though, too, I... I was impressed. I could tell. It's so funny. It's like the little things that you can tell when somebody comes into the industry and they're very much about like this really being a career and they're serious about their path. Uh, Yeah. Because when I asked you for information for this podcast, I cannot tell you how many times girls give me nothing. Oh. Or they send me like um, just unusable information or unusable photos. Uh, So I asked you, you sent me like links to interviews. You had a Dropbox link with headshots (laughs) and every single one of them was usable. I was like, oh my God, this girl (laughs) is amazing. I was very excited about that. Yes. So just like little things like that, when you can see like somebody's like, okay, this, these are the things that I do to, you know, get my name out there and promote myself. Exactly. That's so important. Um, I I think more people should do that. Like reach out to podcasts or reach out to anyone, people who aren't in the porn industry, you know, Mm -hmm. it's just good to get your name out there. Yeah. And it's fun. Like, like we talked about this before we came on, just getting to know each other off of a set. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. PR is important. And I feel Mm -hmm. like a lot of people don't see that and yeah uh, it'll separate your brand from yeah. everyone else for sure and I always tell people I'm like get yourself like a PR kit like just yeah. get yourself a little bio links to whatever interviews you've done like just put it in like a doc yeah then like photo safe for work photos maybe some not safe for work photos depending on what you're doing yeah put it on like a little drop box and then like when people ask you for your PR kit just send it it's really not hard to do yeah and update your headshots because some people will use a headshot from like 12 years ago yes <laughs> yes that is so, absolutely true yeah Anyway, look at me giving business advice. This is Nikki Benz. This is her. <laughs> Shout Nikki, out. You're channeling Nikki. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you grew up in Hawaii yeah. um, with military parents. Tell us what that was like. Oh, well, my parents, um, they were very active in the military, so they were rarely home. 
And being in Hawaii, it's easy to just skip school and go to the beach. Mm. <laughs> so I grew up just on the beach like every day and surfing and yeah, it was fun. It, I was very spoiled. Like the beaches in California don't compare. <laughs> yeah, no, they really don't. So yeah, I haven't surfed here yet. Um, I'm just not ready to wear a wetsuit. <laughs> <laughs> but Hawaii was amazing. I was definitely spoiled. But at the time, you're very like, you don't appreciate it, I feel like, because you just feel stuck on an island. Mm -hmm. But now that I've gone, I would love to just go back and retire there. Yeah. yeah. When did you leave Hawaii? Um, So I joined the military. Where did I... When did I leave? It feels like this last few years in the industry has just like been my entire life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, I joined the military. Okay, my parents got divorced. So I left. I graduated high school early, um, joined the military out of Florida, and I got stationed back in Hawaii right away. So I ended up Was that leaving. just a coincidence? Or did you kind of like request that? No, or? I was supposed to go to Korea. Okay. Um, my dad, he was highly ranked. So he kind of finessed right me gotcha. he knew the general and he got me to come back to Hawaii to him okay <laughs> kind of was mad at him for that but it was a great duty station so yeah I did four years there and then I ended up stationed in Monterey my last year okay but yeah I was in Hawaii for like a big chunk of my life okay yeah so tell us what being in the military is like oh my gosh like what did you do specifically it's so crazy because it really depends what your job is and what unit you're with. Like mm -hmm. I was with the combat unit, so I was training every day in the rain. Um, my main job was human resources. So I thought it's gonna be easy. I'll just be in an office. I can go to college part-time. That, that was my big goal. Like I skipped school so much, I had to go join the military to go to college. Mm -hmm. And my parents both did it. So I thought, you know, if they could do it, I could do it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it turns out when you go to a combat unit, you're actually in the field all the time, no matter what your job is. So they handed me a machine gun <laughs> and I had, yeah, I was in the field in the rain for like four years. <laughs> oh my God. It was a lot. It was a lot on my body. Um, but it's crazy. Like the military is more mentally challenging than it is physically. I think like if you can control your mindset, like you can exceed the standards. So, so how do you mean? Like as far as the physical fitness tests, um, I would just push myself. I wasn't as fit as everyone else, but mentally I would just push myself and I exceeded the physical training standards. I was like out pushing the guys, but that's probably why they gave me the machine gun because I could lift heavy things. <laughs> so I kind of screwed myself. I was stuck carrying the big gun everywhere. <laughs> Is that why but, your last name's Gunner? Yeah, Okay. because I was a machine gunner. <laughs> that makes sense. That totally makes sense. Yeah. So, so when you say like mentally challenging, you mean kind of, you like mind People, over body. Yeah. And especially with withdrawal sergeants, like mm -hmm. they, they want to press your buttons to see how you react under pressure. Mm -hmm. Like that's a huge thing in the military. So yeah, just like learning it's game and you have to play the game. It's kind of like the adult industry. Mm. <laughs> it's all a game and you just have to, you know, yeah. be professional and do your job and be nice to people and you'll be okay. Do you feel like that really set you up for your work in adult now? Oh, for sure. Especially just the discipline that I learned in the military because mm -hmm. going from the girl who would skip school every day to exceeding standards and just mm -hmm. being on time and I had soldiers I was responsible for it made me more aware of people and how to treat other people I don't know yeah it's like it's hard to explain if you go through it I feel like you understand yeah and it's hard to explain to people who weren't in the military right but yeah <laughs> <laughs> was it hard being a woman in the military Oh, yes, it was. That's I was the only female in my barracks. So it was all men. How many people are in your barracks? Oh, my gosh. It was probably like 300 people. What? Or more. You were one woman out of 300 guys? Yeah, yeah. And um, I was living in, it's like dormitories, basically, right? So, like, people were stealing my panties out of the laundry. Like, I was getting harassed a lot. Not physically, but just, like, right. verbally and yeah, <laughs> it was rough. I mean, because you're but I'm hot pretty, like, too. I'm pretty so it's not like, naive. I'm pretty strong minded. Yeah. So I don't take shit from people. But um, after a year of that, I was like, I have to get married. I have to get out of these barracks and get off post. Because if you get married, um, the military covers you housing for somewhere away from the post. So, yeah. <laughs> this is so interesting. I don't know anything about the military. Yeah. Okay. So you were being like sexually harassed by all of these men. For sure. <laughs> and you decided to get married to get out of that. Exactly. So tell me about like, who did you marry? 
Um, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Okay, so I was dating someone and they weren't really like wanted, they didn't really want to date me back. So I married his best friend. <laughs> so I was friends with his best friend and I was like, well, this guy is not going to work. Yeah. So I need to move on to the next. And me and his best friend got along really well. We dated for a week. It went well. And I said, you know what? Instead of boyfriend and girlfriend, we should just be husband and wife. It's like the same thing. So <laughs> oh, yeah. It's exactly the same. <laughs> yeah. So we went to a Starbucks and met a guy there to marry us. And you got married it. in a Starbucks? Yeah. In oh like my God. five minutes. It was crazy. Wow. Yeah. So that marriage didn't work out. But I mean, really? it was really set, not That's set up. That's so strange. <laughs> it was not set up for success. But I'm glad I did it. I ended up like moving off post. I had dogs. Like mm-hmm. I was having such a good life, like away from all the mm-hmm. craziness. So, yeah. Yeah. How I, long were you married for? Um, Like two years. Okay. Yeah. And then I uh, got divorced, went our separate ways very peacefully, and mm-hmm. I was stationed in Monterey for my last year. And things Single. were better there? Oh, yeah. It's okay. a, um, a language institute, so it wasn't more like combat guys. Like right, <laughs> right. Horny guys all the time. It was more of like a school. Okay. Yeah, so I was cadre. I was like, um, I worked at the school. Right. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's so interesting. Yeah. My God. How old were you when all this went down? Um, I got married at 19 and then, yeah, I got out of the army like three years ago, two or three years ago, I think. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, before you left the service, you managed to get your boob job paid for by the military. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. How did God you do bless that? America. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love the military. Um, oh, how did I do that? Oh my gosh. Okay. I was in Monterey and not a lot of people go get plastic surgery there because it's a a language institute. So Mm -hmm. it's mostly students. Mm -hmm. But my surgeon, I told him about my situation with my my husband that we got divorced and he would kind of like joke about my boobs a lot. Mm -hmm. So if you have any sort of um, mental problem with your body or like body dysmorphia, they'll give you a free cosmetic surgery because they want their soldiers to be confident. Yeah. <laughs> I've had soldiers get their vagina snipped. Like, yeah. So I went to the surgeon and um, he doesn't do that kind of plastic surgery. So he sent me to the Air Force. The Air Force does amazing boobs. Like, <laughs> I salute the Air Force. So, yeah, he was like, no one really gets surgery here because they're all students. I would love for you to be my, my guinea pig and send you up there and see how it turns out. So it was a free boob job. Wow. Yeah. So I went up, the Air Force did it, and then... Wait, so I, like, really want to get, like, lipo on my midsection after the baby because I just can't lose the weight, so should I just join the military? Yeah. The military wives get lots of surgery. Really? Yeah, I don't know if there's a cap on their surgery. Like, for us, it's usually one cosmetic surgery, Uh but I think they can just do as much Wait, so the wives get as much as they want? I think so, yeah. How does that work? (laughs) I don't know what it's kind of because then like rude. then like happy wife happy life yeah, like maybe. if your wife's happy and feels like she then it's you're confident. happy and probably then... that makes sense that's <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so read your regulations if you're in the military because you never know what's in the the fine line like what you could get out of the army like you the army uses you so you need to use it back a little bit you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean that you know fair enough <laughs> fair enough wow that is that is I learned something new today yeah um, so how did you make the transition to porn? Um, oh, good question. Well, I started camming and I actually started, I'm going to say this on here cause I can say it now, okay. but I actually started camming while I was in the military, which is not allowed, but right. I did it my last year because I wasn't making any money. I could barely afford to But live. also like they paid for your boobs. Like, sh- like, shouldn't yeah. you? Like, you pay for my boobs. Why can't I show them to everybody? Yeah, the exactly. The great job that you... They did amazing. <laughs> for me. Yeah. That's so funny because when I was getting my boobs done, the doctor said, um, I don't want to give you porn star boobs. Like, you don't need huge boobs. And the irony, I'm a porn star now. Yeah. <laughs> like, you should have came through with the bigger boobs. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I started camming for a little bit. Um, I met some girls who were cam girls. I was like, you're making what I make in a year in, like, a month. Like, mm-hmm. I need to do what you're doing. So when I saw I was getting really comfortable with that, I could get out of the army and 
survive in mm-hmm. California, like making a good paycheck, you know? Mm-hmm. So I got out. Um, I started going to college. COVID hit. Um, I couldn't get a job anywhere. I was getting lonely on cam um, because, you know, it's just from your bedroom. You don't really yeah. meet anyone. So uh, my fans were the ones who were like, you're really good at performing. Like, you should do this professionally. And they sent me a bunch of um, agencies that were on the AVN website. Mm. So they helped me get into porn. Wow. So I, like, owe my career to my fans. Oh, my God. That's really sweet. <laughs> yeah. So I still cam all the time. And they're like, you've come so far. Like, oh my it's God. really sweet. Oh, they like carried you through your career. They're my best friends. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that's like I think a lot of people who don't really know a lot about the adult industry and yeah, specifically about camming are surprised to hear that performers can have like a good relationship, you know, with, with their fans. fans yeah. That isn't just like this kind they of teach me so much. monetary exchange. I mean, obviously yeah. there's a monetary exchange, but there is like there can be like a real connection and and authentic friendship there there is yeah like even if I'm going through something they'll give me advice and help me get through it like and I'm there for them too so it's like transactional in a way like we're both there for each other yeah but it's like real friendship especially when you meet them at avian or Mm -hmm. the expos expos it's just fun yeah you know to actually see them they're good people yeah yeah (laughs) yeah the the idea that like every guy on cam is like some creepy perverted i mean often i find there are those like rude people of course you know but that's everywhere right that's everywhere yes i i find though that honestly you have much nicer fans um or much nicer people on your camming sites on yeah. OnlyFans than you do on social media. Cause when people start paying for your content, they're not yeah. there to like be to shit on you, exactly. but like on Instagram, like mm-hmm. they're there, YouTube, yeah. they're there to shit on you. Exactly. It's, like, free, so it's free. So I can say like free. whatever I want to you <laughs> behind the pseudonym. You yeah. have no idea who I am. And I can say exactly. horrible things to you and make you feel bad about yourself. But the ones who are actually like, willing to pay for your time yeah and the camp fans are honestly the camp fans are the most loyal fan base because Mm -hmm. they're getting to know you as a person versus Mm -hmm. just watching you on a porn site yeah so i'm just so thankful for them (laughs) my career i think that's really what set me apart in my career versus other new girls coming in was that i have that like loyal fan base right yeah so what do you do when like when are you still camming yeah, I do. Okay. So how long are you generally on cam and like what does that time normally consist of? I usually go on for two hours a mm-hmm. night. If I don't have a scene, I might as well. Yeah. You know? So I'll go on for two hours and then sometimes I do an OnlyFans live. So, yeah. And then do you guys like generally talk and then it's there's talking, like. talking, surprisingly. Yeah. I have a lot of friends who want to do sex work, but they don't actually want to do the sex part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, okay, guys, you want to put your foot like halfway in I get it but yeah. cam is great because you can literally just talk to people and people just want to be heard and have a friend mm-hmm. and then maybe you can get it topless but you don't really have to fuck yourself on camera or do anything mm-hmm. crazy like that so yeah 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 I have found that um there's just I think there's a lot of people and I think this is so apparent like with COVID mm-hmm. and then like the explosion of OnlyFans there's just a lot of people out there who are just longing for like human connection with someone yeah. who's not going to judge them exactly because I think also too a lot I mean, from my experience, from a lot of, um, you know, my fans that I've talked to that they don't all like some of them don't necessarily like have great success with women. Yeah. And have a hard time connecting with women. Oh, they have yeah. like some kind of social anxiety issue or maybe they might even be like disabled or something. And so they like they have a hard time like dating women in real life and so it's way easier online it's I, easier I'm online personally hotter online so. <laughs> <laughs> so i love you know i love the internet <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so what kind of porn did you watch before you were in the industry um milfs milfs yeah okay. i love like lesbian milf i don't know something about a woman who knows what she's doing turns mm-hmm. me on any particular so. performers um no i loved anything with Abella bella danger though i was i'm used who's to not a, a milf so yeah, that's interesting she would play a stepdaughter usually yeah um but i used to be a big squirter like now it's harder for me on camera i get like squirt shy really <laughs> I get shy. So, but when I'm in my personal life, I ruin mattresses. Like it's crazy. Wow. Yeah. I think I just need like that connection with someone like in a relationship or something Uh because I'm ruining mattresses left and right. But (laughs) I used to love to squirt. So I would watch her stuff because she could like squirt, you know, fountains. Yeah. (laughs) It was so hot. (laughs) What was, um, 
So when you, I guess let's, you know what? Let's take a commercial break okay. and then let's come back and let's talk about your first porn scene and what it was like, like actually starting to do like boy on girl, girl, girl sex work. Yeah. So hang tight guys. We will be right back. Sometimes we all need a little helping hand. And if for you, that means help with keeping your erections going stronger and longer, Blue Chew is here for you. Listen, ED affects more than half of guys at some point or another in their life. Maybe you've been dealing with this issue for a while now, or maybe you sometimes just need a backup plan because you've got a new partner, you're stressed out from work, or whatever may be going on in your life that could keep you from performing at your best. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. Because Blue Chew is an online prescription service, there are no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door in discreet packaging. Blue Chew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredient and strength for your prescription. And Blue Chew has given me a special deal for my listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code HOLLY at checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code HOLLY to receive your first month for free. Sex should be the best part of your day. So make sure that you're confident and ready to go with the chewables from Blue Chew. All right, guys, we are back. So Kaylee, tell us about your very first sex scene and like walk us through it. Who was it with? What was it like? Okay. Um, it was actually my favorite scene I've ever done. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's pretty rare. Yeah. Um, but uh, I did it for, oh my gosh, I'm having like a, a blank right now for the company name, mm -hmm. but it was one of those companies where it's a new girl, like a college girl or something mm -hmm. like you have never performed before, mm -hmm. but, um, the agency I wanted to go with wouldn't take me until I did my first practice scene. Hmm. So, yeah, because I was in the military. I didn't really have anything to show for as far right. as sex work. So okay. they flew me out. I went to Arizona and shot my first scene ever. But it was amazing because I didn't have any expectations. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, like, how to perform or, like, I didn't have any pressure. I just could go and enjoy it. So mm -hmm. I went. I had an amazing time. And it went, like, viral. <laughs> really? Yeah. So the agency ended up taking me. And that's really how I got into the industry, too. But Who uh, did you work with? Do you remember? Yeah, he's currently not here anymore. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So it was a boy girl scene. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for um, exploded college girls. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. It was fun. Gotcha. <laughs> and then that went viral. Mm -hmm. And so you you said you went in with no expectations. Yeah, I just went and I didn't even know there they had cameras in the car like and everything. They they told me when I landed, so I had like consent and stuff. Right, right, right. But I just really had fun like so it was the scene in a car yeah so it starts in the car and then they take you to a hotel okay and then you have sex there for a long time okay <laughs> it's a really long scene and then yeah that's basically it but it was it a long car. scene because they told you they needed a lot of time or just because you guys they got just so want to lost film the whole and... experience of me okay. for the first time getting into a car with people I don't know like shooting my first porno it was kind of hot my fans love it okay yeah. so they really do it's almost like a reality scene exactly. like it's not a fake setup it's like Hi, I'm Kaylee Gunner. This is my very first scene. I just got off the plane. I'm on my way to the hotel to shoot this. Like, I don't know what to expect, et cetera, yeah, et cetera. Exactly. Cool. It was fun. Yeah. I got to just be myself. So yeah. There was no like pressure. <laughs> right. What um and then after that you just started yeah, shooting. After that, I just I immediately the agency called me when the scene released and they were like, When can you come to LA? And because I was still in the Bay Area at the time. Mm -hmm. um, They're like, when can you come to L.A. and do your agency photos? And I went out there. And, yeah, that's when it all started rolling for me. Right. Yeah. But I feel like recently people are really starting to hear my name more. Mm -hmm. It took me some time. I had to, like, learn my brand and what I wanted to look like, what I wanted to perform like. It just took a year or two, you know. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting that you put all that much thought into it because not everybody does that. Yeah. You have, to, you have to see what works for you and your fan base, like what they yeah. react well to, you know. Right. Yeah. Who are some of your favorite performers that you've worked with? Oh, my gosh. Kenzie Ann. She's one of my faves. Okay. Um, Savannah Bond. I love um, Nikki Benz. Mm -hmm. I just like people who 
I don't know, they treat it not just like it's a paycheck. Mm -hmm. They actually come and we have great chemistry. It turns into a good scene. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's just treats it like it's a profession, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What about guys? Oh my gosh, there's so many good ones. I like um, Quentin James because mm -hmm. he's so hot. He really is. Yeah, and his wife. I love looking. his wife so much. Yeah, Quentin James is amazing. Who else? Oh my gosh, there's so many. Um, Isaiah Maxwell. Mm -hmm. He always hits a nerve in me, mm -hmm. and my foot like curls. Really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, his dick is so huge. <laughs> Those are my like top two right now. I'm starting to work with more um, OGs. Like I worked with Mike Adriano. Um, yeah. Anyone who knows what they're doing, Kieran Lee, I love Kieran. Mm -hmm. He's good. Anyone who really just knows what they're doing, and I like guys who take control of mm -hmm. the scene. Kieran's great. Just don't yeah. ever leave your phone unattended on set with oh, him. Oh, he'll take selfies. No, it's not just that. Oh. He'll go on Twitter and say that you shit yourself. Oh my god. He'll go on your account. He'll he. I I haven't seen him do it in a while, but like he's notorious for that. So he'll take your phone. If you leave it unattended, he'll go into your Twitter and he'll write, oh, my God, I just shit myself. You know, what? I'm going to do that to him next time. I'm you should, because that would be. And it's so funny because now it's at the point where, like, if anyone who's been in the industry for a while and who knows Kieran sees, like, someone like a Bella Danger, like, wrote, oh, my God, we shit ourselves. Like, yeah. I just shit myself. We're like, that was Kieran. Like, we know exactly <laughs> what happened. We know a Bella didn't shit herself. I'm like, you, Karen. I'm going to do that to you. Yeah, that would be <laughs> fucking hilarious. It's epic. <laughs> that would be epic. Um, so, but there's so many good performances. This. It's so hard to choose like a few. I know. And there's so many good ones for different days. Like maybe I'm in the mood for this person. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I kind of hate it. To be fair, I kind of hate it when people ask me that question mm -hmm. um, because there's so many people that I, I love, like so many models that I love yeah. working with. And I, I'm always going to leave somebody out that I, I like really adore. And then I'm going to feel bad when I'm like, oh, I should have said that person. Yeah, exactly. Is there anyone that you haven't worked with that you really want to work with? Um, Recently, it was Angela White, but I mm -hmm. just got to work with her. I'm How so, was that? Oh, my gosh. She's so amazing. I don't think anybody has a bad scene with her. No. We actually sweet. joke that this podcast should be called I Love Angela White because anytime her name comes up, everyone's like, oh, I love her so much. Yes. I love her. Adriana Chechik, I want to work with, actually. I've she, actually never met her yet. We she, in, well, you might be, you might meet her today. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah, but she's a great performer. She's an incredible performer. Yeah. Yeah, she's a lot of fun to work with. Mm -hmm. um, are you still close with your family at all? Uh, yeah. My dad actually knows what I do. Um, I think he found out through watching porn, which mm -hmm. is really awkward. But. Yeah. <laughs> That's not that's he, not the best way to find no, out. But he's so supportive. He was like, "You're up for awards. I'm so fucking proud of you." Like, that's amazing. Yeah. So he gets it. And that's hard. And he's like, "Can I let me know if you have any friends who are single?" I'm like, "No, Dad. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> like, I'm not, my, I'm not your pimp." Like, <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. But yeah, so he just loves what I do. He follows my Instagram. He obviously doesn't watch my porn. That'd be a little weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he keeps up with like what I do. So yeah. And then my mom is super religious. Very, very religious. So wow. She's, yeah, she doesn't know yet, so it's a secret. She doesn't know yet. <laughs> no, she thinks I'm in college, like doing bottle service. She's so she's so religious. I told her I was doing bottle service, and she said, "You're going to hell." <laughs> wow. So we, I see her like once a year. I'm not as close with her as I am my dad. Yeah, like, I just like open minded. Yeah, you know people. So, <laughs> so did you grow up like in a religious house? It sounds like your oh, dad's yeah. not that religious. No, he had like a marijuana farm. That's why they got divorced. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say it's. They sound like very different yeah. people. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was meant to happen. They needed, but yeah, I grew up going to church and everything, and going to like Bible school, and mm -hmm. I, I was in a what is it called Baptist school. Mm -hmm. So I was definitely the, the rebel there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What um, how, what's your views on like spirituality and God now? Now it's really, mm, so I don't go to church myself. Like I don't really think I need to do that, mm -hmm. but I still believe in some kind of higher power. Like if I have to say, I believe in God, that's fine. I just believe in something's out there. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think we just kind of magically poofed on this earth mm -hmm. <laughs> and all the planets. So I don't know. We'll see. That's what, uh, that's my worst fear. Death is my worst fear. Oh my God. Same. I'm I just like, had a long conversation with Corey Chase actually. Um, yeah who I interviewed before you and we had this long talk about death and she's like f cool with it. And I'm yeah. like terrified oh, of it's it. It's so scary. I'm like, am I going to be burning for an eternity? I'm like, dad, like if you go to heaven, just throw me a ladder. I'll come up. <laughs> 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 I don't know what's going to happen. And then there's also like people who believe in, um, 
like reincarnation and mm-hmm. things like that. So it's like, what am I going to come back as? So I treat everyone really nicely. <laughs> You never know. (laughs) So do you, I mean, do you believe in like one or the other or are you just kind of like any of these things could be true? Yeah. I don't, and I'm very like open to Mm -hmm. learning about other people's religion. I Mm -hmm. just don't have like a specific one that I I would say I believe in. I just believe something's out there and I believe in good karma. (laughs) Do you believe, so do you believe in life after death? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I guess so. (laughs) I'm scared. (laughs) I know I am too. But we'll see. I'm just like, I think if you just do like be nice on this earth and we'll see what happens next, you know, all you can do is be a good person. (laughs) I agree with you. I think that all you can do is, yeah. I mean, karma I think is, and also too, I think that you manifest, like you manifest what you bring into your life. Just the energy that you put out there, like brings you back. Oh, I believe in that so much. A very similar energy and you know on like its most basic level you know if you're a positive person you attract positive people into your life because people like to be around that kind of energy and if you're negative then you tend to repel like positive people and that's what I like to surround myself with like if I notice someone's like a leech in a way they Mm kind of like drain you I don't want to be around those people like I'll work with them but that's not someone who I would go hang out with on my free time you know Mm -hmm. so it's good to be aware of people and what kind of energy they give you yeah. yeah are you good at setting boundaries I am actually yeah That's I'm, a, I'm not scared to say no to plans or going mm-hmm. out and partying like I need I'm a grandma I have to be in bed by eight or yeah. I'm gonna be a jerk the next day I'm the same <laughs> yeah how old are you I'm 25 wow yeah. To have your shit together like that at 25, that's pretty remarkable. Oh, thank you. I mean, I did not have my shit together It at doesn't 25. feel like I do, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad it looks like that. <laughs> as long as I can fake it. <laughs> so what do you do in your free time? Oh, my gosh. I feel like I don't really I – lo- I love my job. So I just love to shoot content. I'm always collabing, doing photo shoots, um, always going out to dinner with friends. Like, I just love chill vibes. So I like to go to dinner once a week. Like, Kenzie, Ann is going to come over. We're going to do a live show and mm-hmm. go to dinner. Things like that. I'm very boring outside of porn. <laughs> but I like it that way. Like, you know, I don't know. I don't want to feel like I'm working all the time, though. Like, I want my work to be fun. Yeah. So. Do you have a hard time, like, creating that balance between work and your personal sure. life? That's my I feel yeah. like everybody does these days. I do. I've had friends who are like, hey, I miss you. Like, don't forget to make time for, you know, yourself and people that you actually love. So I'm learning to find that balance, like, if I need to take a day off on my calendar, that's one thing I struggled with my first year. I was like, I can't miss an opportunity. I need to be booked. Like, I can't take one single day off. And now I'm like, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Like, people will, if they really want to book you, they'll find another date. Like, mm-hmm. you can take a day off for you, like, once a week or something. Yeah. Well, especially with what you do for a living, because, I mean, having sex a lot is, is hard on your body. Oh, yeah. It affects my like I try to date while mm-hmm. I'm in the industry and it affects my personal relationships too. Yeah. Like my sex drive is just lower because I'm always overbooked sometimes. Mm-hmm. But so yeah, you have to learn to be able to take time off for yourself and the people in your life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. How is dating for you? Hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm trying to be more open. Like I've dated a couple um, so like a man and woman, mm-hmm. um, I've dated people so who you were in, in a thruple. Yeah. A thruple. Oh, yes. So much fun. I've dated like, um, athletes, like things, people I wouldn't date normally before porn. I'm just trying to be more open to different lifestyles and mm-hmm. see what works so far. I'm still a lover girl. Like I just, I get jealous really easy. Mm. So it's hard for me to date a performer for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But then how is that? It's like not fair, right? No. Yeah. I'm doing it. I know. <laughs> And I, I don't know. And then I don't want to be the girl. I mean, there's plenty of people who do it, but I don't want to be the girl who says, like, I'm only going to do girl, girl now mm-hmm. because my boyfriend isn't OK with what I do. Like, I'd never want that to happen. Right. So I'm learning to find people who are more open minded and are in my industry, but maybe they're not performers. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. The only person that I ever dated in the industry was not a performer. Yeah. He was a journalist. So oh, OK. But he got, he understood the assignment. (laughs) Yeah, but also, like, I don't perform, so it didn't really. Oh, yeah, yeah, So, like, dating has not been hard for me. Yeah, true. I mean, as a a woman, like, 
So I, like one of my really good friends is Mike Quasar, the director. Okay. And he Love has a hard him. time dating women because yeah. he's a guy and then, and he's around a lot of hot naked women. And so oh. like, there's that jealousy issue. Yeah. Whereas guys are like, oh, you're around a lot of hot naked women. Like that's cool, you yeah. know, for me. So like, I don't generally have that problem. Okay. I see. Yeah. yeah. I think of it right now as it's not something serious. Like if I'm going to date, it's like a fun moment for me mm-hmm. while I'm doing what I do. It's just like, you do your thing. I'll do my thing long distance is great Mm. I get to focus on my career and then take a few days off to go spend time with like my person you know Mm -hmm. so I'm learning (laughs) do you want to like get married and have a family in your future oh for sure way later later. (laughs) yeah you got to really time I mean I had my first kid at my first kid my only kid at like how old was I like 41 or something oh wow how old are they now um, she's going to be two in a couple of weeks. Oh, cute. So See, that would be great. I'll yeah. wait until I'm like yeah. 40. You can wait. It's people always, I mean, I was terrified. It's so funny cause I look back now. So I split up with my first husband when I was like 34 mm-hmm. and I just remember it, it took me a while to get out of that relationship for multiple reasons. But one of them was like, I was so terrified that I would be undateable at like 34. I'd be too old. Nobody would want me, especially yeah. in LA where everybody's so that. young. Yeah. And I would, by the time I met somebody, dated them for long enough that like I wanted to be with them and then, you know, had kids, like I, it would be too late. Yeah. And it's just funny cause I'm 44 now and yeah. I look back like that was 10 years ago and like I was so dumb. Yeah. Like, right. Uh, okay. Like it I all mean, worked that, out. Yeah, it will. Yeah. That's true. You can't, and you can't force things like just let things unfold, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, especially if you believe that, you know, what you put out into the universe and what you manifest is what you get back. I needed to wait until I was the age at which I, which I met my current husband because like I had so much like personal shit that I had to uh, sort out and again? deal with. We've been together for six years and I'm 44. So yeah, I was 38 when I met him. 38 is my year. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I've got time. You've got so much time. Yeah. So I'll, I'll kill it for yeah, little fun, fun relationships for now. <laughs> yeah. And I also found too, that for me, it was like, once I was at the point that I felt comfortable being single and oh, comfortable yeah. with the possibility of being single for the rest of my life, yeah. that was when the right person walked into my life. Oh, there you go. You know, Good to know. Cause I feel like a lot of times people, I don't know the way that I look at relationships now, I think yeah. before I looked at it, you know, it's the, the whole like Disney princess syndrome. You're not oh, yeah. complete until you find your other half. Like mm-hmm. the whole, like you complete me from that stupid yeah. fucking movie with Tom Cruise and Renee Zellweger, whatever the <laughs> fuck it is. I forgot what it's called. So fake. Um, but like for me, I had everything going in my life that was great. And then my husband just was like, he, I didn't need to be completed. Like I yeah. was complete, but then he was this additional bonus. Exactly. I don't know in my life that yeah. I treasure so much. And the, I think the difference is now is that if we split up, I would be devastated because I love him so much and like we get along great, Yeah. but I would like, I know I'd be okay. Yeah. Like I would make it through Mm -hmm. and I could continue on and I would be all right. And I think living with that, that sense of confidence and that feeling I think is so different than the idea of like, I can't live without this person. Yeah. You need to have some sort of independence and self love there for sure. You can't rely on someone else to give you that. Right. And then I think that that also sets you up as a better partner too, because you don't rely on that one person for everything in your life. Oh yeah. That's you true know? too. They should just be like a, your best friend, like a teammate. <laughs> yeah. And I also, it was interesting. I had did a podcast with Tristan Terramino, who's like a sex, um, sex wellness expert and like educator. And she said some things that really resonated with me. She says that if the problem with, cause she's into, she's in a relationship. I, but she's done like, I don't know if she's polyamorous now, but she, she definitely has dabbled in that. I think she is Tristan. Sorry if I'm miss, miss relationship you, whatever <laughs> that word is, but she brought us some really good points. And she's like, you know, the problem is, is that we look for everything in our partner that they yeah. have to support us in everything. They have to support us sexually. They have to support us like emotionally. They have to support us like intellectually. They have to support like all of the things that we need in somebody. We put all of that on one person. And sometimes that's, that's a lot of weight. That's a lot of weight. Yeah. And not, and usually one person cannot fulfill all of those obligations for you because yeah. we're one person and we don't like, we can't check exactly. all of those boxes. Just be whole on your own. And then yeah. Like you said, or the bonus. 
<laughs> yeah. Or find those things that you need in somebody else, mm-hmm. you know, like have multiple and not necessarily multiple romantic relationships, but yeah. like, you know, your emotional needs maybe are better met by your best friend. I don't know, like something I agree, like that. Yeah. And I, I think, too, when you're a, when you're in a relationship, it's really important to keep your friends close because some people will kind of put mm-hmm. their friends on the back burner but you don't there's some things you don't need to vent to your spouse about like that's yeah. why you should have your girlfriends or you know just your friends in general yeah. yeah yeah that's what i'm saying it's like kind of keeping having like a community of people where everybody serves like some need that you have in some exactly. way or another so you're not putting everything on one person yeah i agree with that because then you're always you're ultimately you're always going to be like disappointed right mm-hmm. because like we can't be everything to everyone exactly so yeah, just be whole on your own. Yeah. And everyone else in your life is a plus. <laughs> yeah. I also think it's like indicative of like our culture these days too, where we, I don't know, like, do you feel like with social media and the internet and phones and everything that we've become less connected as a community? Oh my gosh, yes. I, that's one thing when I'm dating, I will not bring my phone out like for the entire night. Mm-hmm. I think it's so rude, especially yeah. just out with friends, like just, you you don't know anything could happen. You don't know if it's the last time you're going to see someone or Mm -hmm. you just want to be there 100%. But I agree with that. Like technology is kind of ruining our face-to-face time with people. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Which is why when we were talking before this podcast, I was like, that's why I love this podcast. Cause it's like one time that you sit down with somebody for an extended period of time and you just talk. Exactly. Yeah. You don't like check your phone and all of those things. I forgot about my phone. Yeah, I didn't just because it's right there and it has a nifty HRU sticker I on it, that. which, by the way, if you join my Patreon, you will get one of these for free in the mail. Ooh, I Just saying that. fits on the back of your phone really nicely. I love it. <laughs> um, so uh, what are your goals in the industry? Oh, you know, I always get this question and my same answer is I don't like I'm just kind of a very go with the flow person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just seeing where my career kind of takes me. Um, maybe that's the wrong answer, but maybe I'll find out later on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so I don't really have specific goals. Like I don't my goal is not to become female performer of the year. I don't want to. There's not certain people I'm waiting to work with and then I'll get out of the industry. Like I'm just enjoying my time in and mm-hmm. seeing where it takes me. Yeah. yeah. And there's no like time stamp some people are like oh I'm gonna do three years and then I'm done like I'm getting out I'm just kind of like when I'm feel like I'm ready maybe I'll stop but for now I'm just enjoying it that makes sense yeah I think that's good too to just kind of I mean clearly you're business oriented you see this you know as a serious career and you just kind of one foot in front of the other because we can I mean we all love to make plans but like yeah and life laughs at plans yeah you never know what could happen so like I said my goal is just to keep going and keep being nice to people and getting good bookings. And yeah. <laughs> do you, what do you think you'd be doing if you weren't in porn? Um, oh my gosh. I wanted to be a newscaster so bad. I just wanted my makeup and hair done and to be on camera. And now I get that. It's perfect. <laughs> oh so my God. that's, that, yeah. Oh my God. I, <laughs> I just love, love being in front of the camera. Um, yeah, so it worked out. I have my dream job. Have you always been that way? Have you always loved being in front of the camera? Yeah, I went to like film school and high school and stuff, and it was fun. I just skipped a lot of it, so I didn't learn a lot. I mean, you were at the beach. You yeah. lived in Hawaii. Yeah, you know? living the best life. You're only going to be young once yeah. living on the beach in Hawaii. You can have the rest of your life to chain yourself to, yeah. you know, the everyday exactly. grind. But anything with TV and just performing, that's what I love, so... Yeah. Do you ever have any inclinations of working behind the camera? Is there ever anything that else that you want to do? Like, like do you directing? Ever ha- yeah, or directing or producing. Maybe or that's why styling. I do. That's why I love um, collabs because mm-hmm. I like to like choose who I want to be in the video and what kind of outfits we're gonna wear together. What the scenario is, the background. I love doing all that. So maybe directing would be amazing. But for now, I'm happy with performing. I just love to be in front of the camera. Yeah, it is fun though to like set up your own scenes. Mm-hmm. So I've been enjoying that. Yeah. I mean, the ability to make your own content these days, which is Amazing. something that performers generally didn't yeah. have. I don't know what it was like before OnlyFans, like was, the adult industry. I have no idea. It was not the same. I can't imagine. I can't <laughs> it was not imagine. the same. Yeah. 
It's so different now. It's actually now is really the best time to be a performer. You oh, have so sure. much more agency over your career and you're yeah. making more money. And the OnlyFans girls right now are killing it. The ones who aren't with an agency, yeah. they are like, they know how to, like we just talked about, put themselves out there mm-hmm. with PR and everything. Podcasts have changed the game. Mm-hmm. So people who don't even shoot adult, like professional adult porn are killing it too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you prefer doing content for your OnlyFans or for big studios or is it just I, different? I think I love both because I love to be on set and meet mm-hmm. new, new people. It's hard to do that through Instagram, like mm-hmm. DMing people and stuff. But um, so I love both. Like, I don't think I'll ever stop either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a good mix, but I'm learning to like make time for both of them. So I'm not like shooting scenes every single day like I was in the beginning. I'm like more picky now yeah (laughs) but it's good like quality over quantity that's what I think so what are some of your favorite brands to shoot for oh my gosh I can say that on here like the brand names yeah company names oh I love browsers that is my favorite of all time I just love it's fun it's always something different Mm -hmm. it's not like the same stepsister scene or Mm -hmm. I can't even be a stepdaughter or stepsister I don't know why I'm saying that I'm usually a babe (laughs) you're like in that middle range I'm like a hot wife yeah Yeah. you're like yeah you're like the you're too old too young to be a stepmom yeah their plots are just so wild it's so fun yeah um so browsers 100% and I love like the vixen media group Mm -hmm. they are so professional Mm -hmm. and the scenes look like movies Mm -hmm. any companies who take it really seriously are the ones I mostly enjoy to work for yeah what kinds of scenes are your favorites like do you prefer the gonzo no dialogue or do you like the features with like a big script Ooh, honestly I guess it depends on the day (laughs) but I do love acting so I like the long scripts those are good and then I do love like the occasional Jules, Jules Jordan scenes where mm-hmm. you just get oiled up and just have great sex. Mm-hmm. So it's a good mix. Like I can't choose just one, you know, mm-hmm. that's when I think it'll get boring. Cause I'll get too used to something. <laughs> yeah. Are you good with like features and doing a lot of dialogue? Yeah. And stuff I like love that? it. I love the acting. It's really fun. Yeah. And I'm not bad at it. I'm actually really good. That's good. I pride myself on my acting. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we have to have sex after this. Oh, <laughs> that's great. That's a plus. <laughs> Do you have any particular favorite scenes to shoot, like girl, girl, boy, girl, threesomes? Yeah. So I actually love boy, girl, because I just love I'm kind of selfish. Like, I just want it all to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but now I'm starting to love boy, girl, girl, because sharing with another girl is really, really hot. Mm-hmm. And it's like kind of easier. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to take all, do all the work yourself. Yeah, it is. So but it's way more fun. I just love girls now. Like th- that's why I'll do OnlyFans lives and try to get a girl like once a month to come on. I'm mm-hmm. starting to I think I'm bi. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> Were you um, ever with women before you did porn? No, I was okay. never. Yeah. I remember okay. I went on to my first girl girl scene and I acted like, oh, I've done this a million times. Like it was Sylvia Sage. And oh, okay. My dream great. scene, because, you know, I love, like, MILF porn. Yeah. So, yeah, I shot with her, and I was like, you know, I'm a pro. I've done this so many times, and she, it took so long. It was the longest day ever, because I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> but she said I, I was good at eating pussy, so. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, um, I've only been with a woman twice, and both times they were in threesomes, and they were forever ago. Oh, wow. I'm, like, no, actually not into women at all. I'm very straight. Okay. I only like guys. But, like, my greatest fear is that, like, if I ever tried to – play on the other team is that I'd be really bad at at eating. Pussy. Oh no, you can fake it. It's fine. Fake it till you make it. I know, but like it <laughs> I just feel you know I feel so judged. Oh, because yeah. like we always talk about like it's so much better when, it, at, when you're good though. Who's yeah. good at eating pussy and who isn't? Oh yeah. And I'd be so terrified. I'm like, what if I'm really bad at it? Oh no. It'd be so embarrassing. I'm sure you're great. <laughs> But even dating women, like it's been, I've tried it with the, when I dated a Mm -hmm. couple, I can't mentally bring myself to that place. Like I can have sex with them, but I can't build a relationship with a woman. I don't know why. So I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Like your people are attracted to and they vibe with like who they vibe with. So exactly. Yeah. If you're more like you tend to do better with relationships with men. Yeah. So I think I'm more bi in the bedroom. <laughs> yeah. 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 You just like to play. Yeah. I love that to play. That makes sense. <laughs> well, Kaylee, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. It was such a pleasure getting to so know you. I had so much fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Yes. You guys can find me on my website, KayleeGunnerFans.com for all my links.
Perfect. Yes. And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Of course, if you want to support this podcast and watch these interviews live, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered. Make sure that you like and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube so you don't miss a single update. Thank you guys so much for joining us and I will see you next week.